Hiya loves and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I took a weekend off last week. I say off, it wasn't really off. We'd just come back from Clapham Fringe Festival, which was amazing. And then I was gearing up for Blue Balloon Theatre's sixth birthday, which is still astounding to me. Like I can't quite believe we made it to six years old. Nonetheless, I am back this week with another theatre review and I'm really excited to be reviewing this one because there's a lot of stuff I'm going to try and cover in a short time so hopefully it'll be really entertaining to watch and you'll perhaps go and check out the play yourselves afterwards. Also I just I just want to like move my camera slightly this way so you can see my little plant because of it. just look how cute it is! Anyway, New Dawn Fades. It's a play about Joy Division and about Manchester, which for me was amazing because I was like, I'm from Manchester um, and I'm intrigued to see what I learn in, you know, in watching this show because I don't really know much about Joy Division. So I actually saw the show on the last night of its 10th anniversary tour. Wow. Like, this show has been around for 10 years, how incredible, like absolute kudos to the team. And I saw the show at the Royal Northern College of Music, which is an absolutely lovely venue. Um, if you've never been, it is the, um, it's the theatre space within the college that was used. It's massive, it's absolutely huge. But I just felt that this show worked very well within that space. And the story really brought the sort of 70s music scene to life, especially the Manchester music scene. Like, it was really thriving around the time of Joy Division being in the spotlight. So that was really nice to see dramatised. And what's more, as I've just touched upon there, whether you were a complete novice and didn't know anything about Joy Division or whether you were a really avid fan, I felt like you would have taken something away from this show. So let's delve into the synopsis first and foremost so we can gauge what this show is um, about and kind of what it touches upon throughout. New Dawn Fades, a play about Joy Division and Manchester, is the story of four ordinary lads who, inspired by the punk revolution of 1970s Manchester, came together to form one of the most influential bands of all time, Joy Division. The unique production places the band within the context of Manchester's history as a city, with a vibrant reputation setting the scene for a completely new and fascinating look at the Joy Division story. Ooh. Mr Manchester, Tony Wilson, that is like such a profound name in Manchester's music history. If you're not sure who Tony Wilson is, go and Googling. Tony Wilson guides the audience through the heart and soul of both the band and the city, introducing an array of historical figures, including Roman general Julius Agricola, I hope I said that right, uh, Dr John Dee, Frederick Engels, Pete Shelley and the Buzzcocks. The result is a spellbinding journey of love, passion, progress, grief and of course music, drawing inspiration from the enigmatic lyrics of Ian Curtis with a soundtrack featuring live performances of his most beloved tracks. Wow, so no pressure then. I feel like that is a really, really good sum up of what I saw. Um, and I'm gonna hopefully delve into various as aspects of the show itself and the performances to give you a better idea of what I thought and felt on the night of watching it. First and foremost, the uh, brief sort of mention, shall we say, an incorporation of uh, Roman general Julius Agricola was used for a little bit of light comic relief. They had a uh, projection on the back screen of the stage and we saw an actor playing the role of um, this Roman general. Now, for me personally, I didn't really connect to that as much. I appreciated the sort of humorous aspect of it and I know a lot of the other audience members really, really liked it. For me, however, it wasn't really necessary to the rest of the story. And I think once we reached the end of the play, I suddenly thought, yeah, it didn't really need to be there. 
that's just my opinion but I completely understand that it did provide that little bit of well a sort of imagery to go with the history as well as the humorous aspect so performances oh you guys know what I'm like by now I love love uh, delving into my thoughts on people's performances things like that their characterization of roles I think it's it can really make or break a show and within this show there were some incredibly strong performances so hopefully I'm gonna go through the cast list and give my thoughts on each performer so Tony Wilson is played by Al Donoghue it's such an important role to take on although I didn't know much about Joy Division I did know who Tony Wilson was um, and how important he was for well for that musical era in Manchester shall we say I thought his characterization was great uh, he fit the role very very well uh, his vocal quality as an actor very strangely was similar to that of Tony Wilson so that was great casting very very good indeed he got a great great response from the audience as well which was fantastic to see and sort of be a part of uh, what i did notice was that the character of tony wilson narrated the majority of the show as it touches upon within the synopsis with the exception of other characters chipping in here and there to do a little bit themselves sort of interjecting i felt that some of al's lines were uh lost unfortunately it was quite a big space to fill in the royal northern and this came down to two things for me uh, one was diction and downward inflections at the end of sentences uh, so a lot of the last words were lost and generally the diction wasn't really there it's so important to enunciate every single word that you're saying especially with a huge audience as well, it really, really matters. It can be the difference between people really getting and understanding the story and then people walking away going, I missed half of that. But the great thing was that Al delved into the scenes with the other actors with such high energy. His articulation was spot on during those scenes. So what I would like to have seen is a little bit more energy in the delivery of the narrative basically all round great energy then we had debbie curtis so that's ian curtis's wife played by leah gray scaife now i actually know leah um so it was wonderful to see her on the stage in this production she was the um well she was the only female presence in the whole show so absolute kudos to her for playing it so so well i thought her performance was really heartfelt very earnest in nature you did feel that there was this energy of a young mum really struggling i think seeing ian spiral out of control with his mental and physical health of course that would take a toll on anybody but you know with the aspect of fame intertwined with that I thought Leah played it really, really well. There was a great weight to her performance. I saw so many possibilities with the scenes between her and Joe Walsh, who played uh, Ian, of course, Ian Curtis. What I would have liked to have seen, actually, when the relationship really started to break down, was a little bit more physical embodiment of, you know, the emotions that they were feeling in moments of either contact or silence. I would have liked to have seen more of that, I think. That ultimately came down to the direction. And of course, it comes down to what the director wants within the piece as well. So I completely understand if that was their sort of creative vision to keep it like that. I think in a big theater with such highly emotive scenes, it is crucial to find that balance between the stillness and well the movement of it I guess and that real human movement that we would find if we were tense or upset or having an argument all in all though I genuinely thought that Leah uh, did a really really fantastic job and then moving on to the bandmates we had Peter Hook played by Bill Bradshaw very slick performance very comedic a very strong stage presence quite engaging to watch I really really enjoyed everything about his character and characterization then we had bernard sumner uh, played by harry mclafferty um 
really great camaraderie with the other actors within the band. Definitely a chemistry there which I enjoyed. You could tell that they'd rehearsed well together. Very enjoyable performance again. By the way, if you see me looking down it's because I've got my laptop full of notes. So, you know, needs must. <laughs> Then we had Stephen Morris, played by Matthew Melbourne. Really, really solid characterisation, to be honest. Uh, funny. I loved his sort of uh, charisma throughout. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyable. And then we had Rob Gretton, uh, played by Giles Basto. Uh, Giles D. Basto, sorry. For anyone that isn't aware, Robert was the manager of Joy Division and New Order. He was partner in and co-founder of Factory Records, also a founding partner of the Hacienda. So it, again, if you don't know um, sort of what the Hacienda is, it's a, a, a venue, a music venue in Manchester that used to exist. Um, it was huge. It was one of the most, uh, I would say, famous music venues of its time in Manchester. Really, really fascinating history there. And I thought that Giles was fantastic, actually. It was consistently funny, which I loved, and he had this really down-to-earth nature about his acting. I enjoy that in a performance. I really connect to it because that's how I tend to approach a role. He had this very much kind of no-nonsense air about him, so it was great to see that sort of truthful embodiment of a band manager of the time. And then we had Sean Mason, who not only co-directed it, but he played the following parts, okay? Martin Hannett, Terry Mason, Frederick Engels, Paul Morley, Mick Middles, Pips DJ, Mike Scott, Derek Brandwood, TJ Davidson, and an accountant. How do we even begin to review, like, somebody playing all of those parts? But would you believe every single role was so different, so polished. He had this incredible confidence about each character that he played, yet really, really seamless changes between character as well. I really enjoyed that. And I think the audience really liked the, um, the one change between characters that was done on stage. It was very, very uh, simple direction, but it, <laughs> it was really funny because of how straightforward th they made it. To be honest, his energy was really quite impressive within the roles and it truly lifted the audience in moments of the play where it really needed it. I felt, you know, sort of real sheer laughter, which was fantastic. Of course, I had to leave Ian Curtis until last because Ian was the lead singer of Joy Division and his story was quite heartbreaking, but equally quite inspiring to anybody that perhaps has epilepsy or severe depression and is an artist. Played by Joe Joseph Walsh, wonderful friend of mine. I've actually had the pleasure of working with him on stage before. He just had this incredible, captivating energy as Ian. And to see that energy, you know, move along as Ian's story evolves and plays out was really quite special. He understood the gravitas of being an epileptic and having this turbulent lifestyle of somebody constantly in the spotlight, even though it was for a short time, you know, what happened to them as a band, they really sort of propelled forward. And I think for any person, that's a lot, like that's a lot to handle. And not to mention that he had uh, depression as well, quite severe depression. So. I think Joe really brought that to life in a in a truthful, honest way that I think the audience really appreciated. A real highlight for me actually was the end of Act One when we hear Joe sing as Ian for the first time. Quite honestly, it was iconic. It was uh, it was electric. The whole room sort of leaned in in unison and. They were completely in awe of this moment. You know, the band were playing, Ian Curtis, Joel Walsh was there singing. His voice was very, very similar to that of Ian Curtis when he was singing. And 
you know, the, the fact that he's uh, obviously done such research to make it as accurate as possible, incredible. I found as well that the articulation of Joe's body during those live performances was really quite intriguing to watch because one, the movements were so uh, sporadic and uh, quite specific, but I wondered how accurate they were to the real performances. For example, the, their first appearance as a band on Granada TV. And after watching the original clip of that, I saw so many similarities and it was crazy actually to see the similarities in look between Ian and Joe. Again, great casting. Where Joe chose to amplify those moves for the purpose of this stage performance, I thought was perfect to be honest i don't think he could have played it any better and i don't think he could have performed joy division's songs any better so well done joe it was amazing all in all i mean i'm getting a bit like blooming emotional just thinking about it it this this show was so emotional to watch that it was dramatic it was entertaining it was a great dramatization of joy division's story and the history of Manchester's thriving music scene. It's never easy to see a sort of retelling of an artist's death on stage either. And I think in this case, it was so tastefully and respectfully done. Let's be real, it can be incredibly trigger triggering for people who were such big fans of the band and of Ian to see it sort of dramatized in that way but it was very simple the death was kept very simple i thought the lighting actually was perfect for that i really liked how um how simple they'd kept it but the impact was still as great and finally i think the real sort of um commendment has to be for the fact that they put the spotlight on the band's achievements and all they had done in a very very short space of time uh, they were only really in the public eye for about four years so i was quite amazed at how they put all of that onto stage and translated it into a play i just thought it was brilliant it made me very very proud to be a mancunian so thank you for that there we have it guys that's the end of my review i hope you enjoyed it i know i certainly did as always do leave a like and a comment down below if you yourself are a big fan of joy division i'd love to hear your thoughts if this play were to come about again would you go and see it and finally subscribe to my channel what are you waiting for loads more theatre reviews coming up very soon i've got some uh, shows already booked and in the pipeline so i'm really really excited to be reviewing even more very very soon but enjoy the rest of your sunday or whenever you're watching this and i'll see you later bye